Good evening and welcome to the Arts and Culture Commission of Prescott Valley, our meeting of October 21st, 2020. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mary Lou, will you call the roll, please? Yes, I will. Uh, Vice Chairperson Nancy Smith. Present. Secretary Andy Sinclair. Present. Commissioner Edward Lira. Present. Uh, members absent, Chairman Quisenberry, uh, but we do have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to uh, adjust the agenda, to make an alteration to the agenda. I would like to move item, I'd like to move that we, that item 7A be moved to be item 5A. May I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, fit. so moved. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the uh, minutes of September 9th, September 16th, and September 30th? I'd like to make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, I'm, oh, and a motion, I'm sorry, I need a motion to approve the altered agenda as well. I make a motion to approve the alternate agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving right along, Isabella, we have guests. All right, so um, we would love to welcome Ed Riley um, of Braun Smith Fine Art uh, Foundry and Gallery up to give us an update on the Jenkins Obelisk, um, the project that he's working on, the bronze uh, monument that he's working on for us. So, Ed, if you'd like to come up and speak. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about this today. Appreciate that very much. I've had a little bit of progress recently. Um, even that we see what you're seeing right now on the screen up above has been slightly changed compared to what the original uh, plan was. Um, about two weeks ago, I met with members of the Yavapai tribe, and um, I was inviting them for their input on um, one of the sides of the obelisk, and uh, they were very gracious to give me some oh, visual information. And in the meantime, I've made up a, uh, a preliminary sketch to show them of what my idea is uh, based on what they've given me. Uh, they had a request that I switch uh, the side that I had planned for the east side to their side because culturally they like to be on the east side. So I said, well, certainly at this point we can make a little bit of change. So uh, as you see the screen above, like I said, uh, there's going to be a little bit of changes, but not too much. Uh, we have been. Uh, working on the uh, framework for the future side that you see. Uh, we've purchased the stainless steel angle iron and we're currently welding on it. I've got some photographs here I could share with you of uh, Kevin Miner, my assistant, working on the framework. So we're well on our way to finishing the first side. And uh, Doug Stroh uh, from Stroh Architecture was at the foundry today taking measurements so that he's going to uh, um, make a submission to the town uh, to their planning and zoning to get the uh, actual architectural drawings in. So uh, we're making some great progress. Um, I've got some pictures to show everyone, but uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with how things are developing uh, uh, so far. Awesome. Thank you. Would you like me to show yes, right, right here? Yes, of course. Okay, th these are the pictures of the uh, future side being um, uh, worked on. Did that, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is laying down right now um, the angle iron frame, very similar and almost exactly like that drawing is what you see right here. So uh, we're gonna be contacting a local glass or sign company to give us uh, some pricing on uh, the actual glass that's gonna go in there. So we're at that stage already with the first oh, side. Good. And then I understand I talked with Isabella today and she said that uh, 
somebody is uh, working on the, the verbiage for um, that particular side too. So all the, some of these pieces are starting to come together. Here's a close up of what the angles look like. So we've been working on this for weeks already, uh, welding up the stainless steel um, framework. Um, I also brought today the information that was given to me by Linda and Bob Ogo from um, the Yavapai tribe. And uh, this is what they had presented to me of what they would like to show on at least part of their side. And um, what it, uh, I didn't know before, but Granite Mountain is their sacred mountain. So um, they've given me this information, and so I'm going to incorporate that in the upper side of the design. This is the design that I've been working on for their side, as you can see right there. Uh, what you'll see there is uh, the uh, star shape is at the top, and that is a very uh, prominent um, element in their basketry. So a lot of the Native American cultures will say they came from the stars. So at the very top, uh, you see that, and there's like energy or light emanating down from the star. And I've incorporated, this will be a background design that'll be low relief. There are the eagles flying through their basketry design. Here is a symbol of an antelope and a man, uh, a human, anyway. And then these are rain clouds that are raining down on the granite mountain right here. And there's their logo. Uh, and their uh, their huts that you know that they lived in made out of sticks and blankets and things like that, and then their basketry at the bottom. So this is what I presented to them um, uh, the other day. I think it was just even yesterday. So um, that's the design for the top, and then here's the design for the bottom, which I wanted to talk to them already to incorporate uh, Thumb Butte, which is another prominent mountain in their, their realm, in the Prescott area, and then two wiki-up type huts with uh, women making baskets, a man's kind of standing by, and uh, pine trees and you know flora and fauna of, of the area. So this particular part of it will be done in realism, very detailed, but the upper part will be somewhat abstract. And so that's kind of a challenge to do, but uh, all in all, I think the, ups, the upper part of it will be more of a, a design or um, a uh, stylized version on the upper part. But where you're going to walk up and see this at eye level, this would be more like realism. Very okay. good. That's, That's what we have so far. Moving along. Questions? Yeah, we are moving see. along with this. So very uh, pleased to, uh, you know, be... Uh, be working on this in, in all the aspects of it. So thank you very much. I love the incorporation of Yavapai's culture into yes. the design. I think yeah, that's excellent. it was really important to me, and I know it's important to a lot of people. Yep. Yes. So we want for to those inclusive. of you viewers or visitors who may be new to uh, Prescott Valley, this uh, obelisk is going to represent Prescott Valley from the very early history with the Yavapai uh, on represented on one side and ranching on another side and mining and railroads on a third side. These are all elements that have been the historic foundation of Prescott Valley and then the side that we were, that Ed was talking about earlier with the steel and the glass, that represents the future and pointing upward and onward. So it's, if it's new to you, it's coming along. <laughs> Great, it really is. So, thank you. Uh, yes. I'd like to. Uh, we're taking a lot of pictures, so uh, when we get to some uh, more uh, progress, I'll, I'll be back to show you some more. Okay. Yes. Thanks thank again you, for this Brad. opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Ed. Take care. Isabella? It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Oh, I'm excited. Cool. It's exciting to see it moving along, yes. All right, so we have actually another guest artist that we're so excited about. Um, 
Miss Nancy Bush is here, and she is a fine art wood burner. Um, she entered into our Prescott Valley Fine Art Showcase um, this year, and she took home first prize in 2D Mixed Media. Um, she's brought a number of examples of her work today, um, and we're so excited to hear her speak. She also has um, a young assistant here. A gardener is going to be with us. Um, and they're going to be helping her hold up her pieces. So we're so excited to have them both up. Nancy? Thank you. And I would just like to let everyone know that it's really an honor to be here and asked to share who I am, what I do, and where I may be going in the future. I do fine art wood burning. And just for a little bit of background, wood burning is one of the most ancient of art forms. Even going back to the Han Dynasty, it was called fire burning embroidery. And there were other names that were given to this particular craft. And I have been doing this work since approximately about the mid 1970s. Um, I started out in, in Colorado, and I did a lot of my work in Colorado, and I became, I became known as the lady with the, with the art with the three birds. Every, every piece that I do, I, my signature or my handle is my three little flying birds. So when you come to the, to the library to visit all of the artwork that is here, Stop by and look at mine, live on, and see if you can find my three birds. Um, it's just a fun thing, and people who, who know me, and I have a new piece, and they'll say, I wonder where Nancy put those birds now. <laughs> and that is the first thing that comes to mind. How many of you have ever looked at the clouds and found patterns and animals and movement this is kind of how I look at wood. And when I see, I choose my wood, I use slabs of different kinds of wood. I choose a wood either to go with the theme that I want to work with, or what I think that is in the, in the wood to begin with. And each one of my pieces here today represents that. A lot of time and effort, research goes into, excuse me, goes into every piece that I do. If I'm doing an, any kind of an animal, I make sure that I know what that animal looks like. I do research. A lot of times I do, when living in Colorado, we had a, a small bed and breakfast kind of guest ranch with horses. Well, in the, in the fall, the hunters would come to stay and rent the horses. Well, I did a lot of, of wood burnings on gun stocks and if a hunter wanted a bull elk or one of the other animals found in the wild I better know how where all those muscles and tendons and everything goes because they are the best critics of what I do so a lot of research and time and effort goes into and I pick a piece the, the piece that I did for here and my assistant and I'm so glad it's, it's so fun to have an assistant um, if you would hold up the second one, yes, this is the one that is in this show right now, and it's called Live On, and the reason I chose this particular piece for this is because I wanted the, I wanted the movement and the flow of the water, I wanted to show the clouds where the birds would be, um, my great blue herons, then I also included a Sanagua rock art figure. All of these things are the things that are so important to this area. And before you do any building and before you tear things down and change things, look to the past, look to what it is that you hold dear. And so that's how I came up with this. There's the horse over here to represent the wild horses. There is the eagle and all the water. This is the raven in the it's a Fremont cottonwood, and they're the ones that are endangered in 
in this particular area in the Verde Valley and also there. But if you look at this very closely, you can see how the wood itself has a grain and the pictures. I'm not I'm talking. <laughs> okay, thanks. With all of my pieces of wood, I, I, I usually purchase or I do a trade out on slabs of wood that have just been cut. They, it's maybe from a chainsaw, it may be from one of those humongous saws machinery that they use to cut up uh, logs from trees. And then I bring it home and I decide what I wanna do with it. I have pieces of wood hanging all around my house that are gonna talk to me and tell me what it is that I should put on this. But by, by studying the grain and the pictures in the wood, um, I try to use that to enhance what it is that I'm putting on there. Um, some wood, such as the beetle kill pine, on this one, when the pine beetle enters the wood, it causes a stain in the wood. So beetle kill pine wood is absolutely incredible to work with. And on this one, this is called the journey. And in this piece, there is a Native American family. You can even see her baby. <laughs> it's, it really is tiny. But if you will notice, there are patterns that are coming up into here. This becomes the sun or your, or your light. And down in here, the reason this is red, I did not color this. By experimenting with woods, I, f I found that if I just hold the wood burner over an area, especially on pine, it brings the sap to the surface, which gives that red tinge. And that's how that got in there. It was not colored. This is the wood burner that I use. None other, no other. And this is the old Tandy Leathercraft wood burn leather tooling tool. And when I was teaching, teaching is my background, but when I was teaching, and I used to go in Tandy's all the time. And so I, that is where I initially decided I was gonna do something with wood burning. And before I left the district, I bought like three cases <laughs> of these. And I still have four left of what I originally started out with. But I do not use, these come with lots of tips. I found that it took more time to take the tip off, let it cool, put a new tip back on. So I stuck with this and I trained, experimented to see what it would do. So this is what I use. I do not use a pyrometer or a pyrometer pen. Um, a lot of people do and it's just not, it's not what I have been, what I've trained myself to do. Okay. In my travels all along, all around, I have, I have pieces shown in galleries and in private industry all over the nation. I have been fortunate that I have received the Colorado Governor's Award, the Colorado Teacher's Award, and, so, and many other blue ribbons, best of shows, but the most important and fun thing is getting to meet people during the shows. This is a way of learning and getting to know other people. And that's one of the things that's hard with this virus stuff. That we cannot do shows and receptions where people, and you can actually do the interaction, where they can ask questions, they can feel these. Every one of my pieces, I finalize it with an acrylic, a UV acrylic spray, which will protect it from UV rays. Um, on this one, the horses. Right. On the horses, I'm going to have this one. I used the stain and the grain of the wood to bring out what I wanted. What I wanted to show. The horses have become part of the mountain range in the background. This is called Vision Quest, and it's what the stallion who's who's galloping along is envisioning himself when he gets to be a true stallion. But if you turn that over a little bit, you can also see that grain in the wood stays there. 
I mean, and so sometimes I have to ch decide, okay, which side am I going to use? And normally, this is cypress wood. This wood, this is not the cypress from here. It is the cypress from down in the bayous that grow in the water, and they have all these neat roots and entangling things that come out, and that's where you get these little spikes because it's a cross cut of all of those. And I have a friend that lived in Florida that came to Colorado every summer, and he'd stop and bring me my wood. And so that's where this one came. And my little bear, this shows, this one, I, 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 or some like it, I would enter into a miniature show. Miniature shows, they have certain qualifications and you have to follow along with it. This is what I do with some of my smaller pieces. I actually mount them on a board. I stain the board to match some of the colors that are already in the wood, and but this shows how I can. And there are also a lot of people that are locked into the fact that all pictures and things that hang on walls need to be rectangular, and so this helps. And with a lot of people, I have I have said, "Would you rather I framed it?" <laughs> and then I have also framed things. I've had a, a framer that would actually make a frame. The frame went on the wall. The wood burning goes in the middle. Neither one is attached to the other. It's almost like a floating thing, but it gives people that visual rectangle shape that they need. Thank you. Yeah, now that's a heavy one. This is this was done on, and she can hardly. It weighs about 12 pounds. Um, this is alligator juniper. And this is, I had never worked on alligator juniper until I moved from Colorado here in Arizona. And it has some of the most interesting characteristics to it. And no two are ever alike. The only thing that is alike about it is that that wood is really, really hard. And it, if, you, if you even run your hand over it, I didn't sand this down. It is just as smooth as if I were nothing on there, even though I have taken the wood burner and gone around and around and around on it. And you can turn, can you turn that over? Careful, because this is pokey. And you can see the difference between the grain and the patterns on the side that I decided to work on and this one. Thank you. I think we've shown, we've shown all of them. And I also have, and I will put the miniatures. Many years ago, people asked, Nancy, can't you come up with something that's, that's smaller and less expensive? <laughs> and so I came up, I always thought Hummel, yeah. Can you want to pass those around? Um, the Hummel figures. And people would always buy, you know, the next one, the next one, the next one of a certain collection. Well, these are, this is my miniature collection. And people actually order and say, I want this, or I like that, or wow, I didn't know that you did this one. And they actually have these, it, like in a collection on the wall. But my background is my art and my educational background. I have taught school and I and I still work with kids. I taught art and wood shop middle <laughs> then it was junior high. And I think a lot of what I am and who I am today came from my childhood where I was curious and I had parents that encouraged me to do what I did. Just as a tidbit, my my dad had a wood shop in our basement. And the highlight of my entire Saturday was going to Central Hardware with my dad. And that's how I learned about tools and wood and building. That's how I got to teach wood shop because I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> um, I think that's about it. A part of me is literally in every single piece I do. It is very special. 
um, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time. My drawings, my original drawings, I do all by myself on a piece of paper. I have all of my original drawings from anything I've ever done. And then I take that drawing and I trace it like, a, like on a tracing paper. And then I, I do the old pencil in the back and I put that on the wood and then draw around it. And that way, if you draw on any, any of these woods, just begin drawing with it, um, and you don't like what you have, if you erase it, it still leaves an indentation in the wood. And when you hold that wood at a certain angle, you'll be able to see all those little things you didn't want to put in there in the first place. <laughs> so I transfer all of my things to the wood, and then I begin my wood burning. And I do little sections at a time. My house smells wonderful. Um, I do collaborative work. I have made uh, wood burnings on people's tables, wooden spoons, um, the gun stocks. <laughs> but I do, I do a lot of collaborative work also. And um, I have the backing of my entire family. They all have their own little roles in everything that I do. Um, my brother, he's my tech person because I do not do technology very well, so he does it. I can answer emails, but this is my forte. And anyone who would like to try anything, give it a try. We're all artists in our own right. I happen to do this. You may be an artist in something else that you do, but don't give up. Enjoy those clouds. And as follow along with Joyce Kilmer said, I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. That is just fascinating learning about your, your art. It was fascinating learning about your craft. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone have a question? Well, when we were passing the small miniatures around, I noticed the aroma coming off of them. So that, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it smells very good. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. It was fun. I have I've, have never done a presentation this way, be, quite this way before. I've done other things. but And I really want to thank A. Gardner, my official assistant. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I've worked with kids all my life. I used to, I spent two summers teaching kids at the Rocky Mountain Dyslectic Camp, and I spent two weeks at each session, and nobody got burned. <laughs> and one of the things that I thought was so rewarding was when a parent came up to me and he said, Nancy, the local the local stores don't have any more wood burners, which to me, that was the highest compliment that I could be paid because of the fact that it showed that these kids, kindergarten through high school, fell in love with something and they could do it, that they didn't think they could in the first place. They really didn't. When I, when I said something about they each had a practice block and then they had their final piece and we did an art show at the end, but the one thing that really got to them was, at first, was when I said that and you will sign your work. Well, for a person in this with dyslexia, doing the fine, the fine work to write their name, but in the end, everyone did. And, and that, that really got to me. And the home I got to stay in, they had a St. Bernard that loved me. <laughs> <laughs> Plus our two kids. But thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for much. coming and sharing with us. If someone were to want to purchase a piece or get in touch with you, how would they go about that? If someone were to want to purchase a piece or to get in touch oh. with you. Do, you. do you have my cards? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if there's anyone... One of the things about, about my work is these are originals. You can't go out and for less money and get a print. 
if you like something that is in one of these and you say, Nancy, I really like those horses. Can you do one for me? I will redo it. It will never look the same identically, but it, it will be. Um, I have done... I have done the the bird or the raven in the in the tree similar ones several times. But I work from my original drawings, and they can contact um, Isabella, and she has all that. Or I have I can leave some of my cards here. That would be wonderful if you leave a few cards with Isabella. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Isabella, I have all of them. There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Do you want me to leave this? If somebody wants to, I can. That's my sample one. I don't think it works anymore. <laughs> it's my display item. Thank you all again. Thank you, Thank you. Nancy. Yeah. Nancy Bush. Thank you. <clears throat> Isabella. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. That was amazing. I love that performance, uh, that presentation. Um, all right, moving right along. We would love to talk about our um, programs, classes, and special events that we have going on in the town right now in community services. So um, we have art workshops with artist Tom Blank. He is our art instructor. Um, he's fantastic. And he went on a little bit of a sabbatical, and he's back offering daytime drawing, evening drawing, and acrylic painting workshops. Um, each of the workshops is a three-day workshop. And so you're there for two to three hours a day for three days. And you leave with having knowledge about the tools that you're using, the medium, and a completed piece of artwork. So start to finish, pretty awesome class. You don't need to have any background or any skill set whatsoever in order to take his class. Um, we also have a new class. It's called Total 360 Jump Rope. Um, it's offered on Saturdays at the Boys and Girls Club gym uh, for ages 10 and up. So it's um, 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. on Saturdays, and it's $30 per month. You actually pay for a monthly session for every Saturday of the month. And um, it's taught by our instructor, Michael, who also teaches our karate classes. So. He wanted to offer something that was really an upbeat fitness class um, for active people that's, you know, there's a lot of dance classes out there, so he wanted to do something different. So we've got this awesome jump rope class. All right, we also have our 2020-2021 winter volleyball season coming up already. So um, this is for co-ed, women's, and men's teams. Um, the registration opens November 16th, and let me tell you, it fills up very quickly. Um, we always have a waiting list. So um, it's $150 per team for ages 15 and up. Um, again, November 16th, if you're interested in playing winter volleyball, co-ed men's or women's, um, go ahead and give us a call at 928-759-3090 or visit us online at pvaz.net backslash parks. That's where you can find the information or go ahead and register on the 16th. We also have uh, another new class, which is awesome. Um, it's a yoga, I'm going to say this wrong, Qui Gon and Tai Chi. So um, it's a combination of all three of those elements into one class. Um, so something you've probably never done before, um, all three combined into one. It's on Wednesdays from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. at the Civic Center. Um, we actually are currently doing it on the outdoor stage, which has been really nice for participants. They're outside, it's perfect weather, and it's only $6 per class. So um, again, visit us at pvaz.net backslash parks to find out more, 
Um, stop in at the Civic Center at the Parks and Recreation Office to sign up, or you can give us a call at 928-759-3090. We have an event this weekend, an outdoor free family event. It's called Jack-O-Lantern Town. So um, this year we're really you know, trying to stay away from trick-or-treating door-to-door as a community just as a safety precaution. So we've come up with this great outdoor fun safe event for the family. Um, it's a Halloween event, so go ahead and wear your costumes. And um, we're also asking if you are interested to bring a jack-o'-lantern to the event. And if you bring a jack-o'-lantern, you're entered in to win extra raffle tickets. Um, we have incredible raffles for this event. Every business in the town has given us raffle items, so you definitely want to come out and participate in these raffles, and they're all free, free from top to bottom. We're going to have the um, Presque Valley Police Department out um, giving away goodie bags and candy, of course. Um, and then we're also having uh, some characters stop by. We're having some princesses stop by. Batman's coming, so we're very excited about that. Uh, we're going to have socially distanced photo booths for those characters to be in. Um, and then we're also playing uh, three movies throughout the night, um, spooky movies. So we're so excited. It's actually at the Civic Center um, on the Theater on the Green. So if you're familiar with coming to our movies under the stars, it's a similar setup um, out at the Theater on the Green this Friday from 5 to 8.30 p.m. So it's not on Halloween. It's before. Um, oh, it's a week. I'm a week Friday. ahead. <laughs> You're so wow. anxious to have it happen. I'm so excited about this event, you guys. <laughs> okay. Correction. Next Friday, that would make more sense, October 30th from 5 to 8.30 p.m. Um, come out and wear your best costume and have a bunch of fun with us. It's going to be great. All right, we also have um, Create a Tree coming up. We talked to everyone about this last time, but just a reminder, applications are open now for Create a Tree. They're due by November 20th this year. Um, if you're not familiar, Create a Tree is our annual um, holiday exhibit here at the library where we fill the library with trees. And um, we ask the uh, public to participate and help us decorate our public spaces here. So um, this year, we are offering Create a Tree, but we're also offering Create a Wreath, if that seems something that you're more interested in or maybe a little more doable for this year. So um, the trees can be anything from a very traditional tree, not a live tree, because we're asking for things to not be flammable, but uh, traditional faux tree all the way to we've had ladders, we've had stacks of diapers, we've had um, all sorts of things. So you can be as creative as you want. It's a really fun opportunity for families to do together, for businesses to do together, um, organizations, churches, nonprofits. So if you're interested in Create a Tree, you can go right to our website, pvaz.net, to download an application. Again, you can stop into the Parks and Recreation office on the third floor of the Civic Center and pick up an application. Um, or you can just contact me directly and I'll send you one. So my email is i-c-h-e-w-n-i-n-g at pvaz.net and I'd be happy to send you a PDF application or answer any of your questions. All right, and then we're also introducing this year, usually, typically, um, everyone is used to us doing our pictures with Santa every year um, in conjunction with the uh, holiday lighting and the parade. But this year, we figure, you know, Santa maybe needs to keep a little bit of social distance from the kids this year so that he doesn't get sick. So um, Santa's coming still, but Santa's going to actually be in a North Pole village here at the library um, the night of Friday, December 4th. So come out for the parade like you always do, and then instead of going to the Civic Center to get your pictures with Santa, come to the library. 
Um, you're just going to enter in through the front door. You won't be able to miss the, the line. And um, you're going to be transported up to the North Pole. You're going to be able to walk through Santa's village, see the elves working, see Santa writing on his list. Um, and you're also going to be able to get a family picture at the end of it. So it's going to be a really fun experience um, here at the library on Friday, December 4th directly following the Festival of Lights Parade, so typically 6, 6.30 p.m. All right. As and we want to add that after you visited with Santa, you can come downstairs and walk through the uh, Create a Tree exhibit and vote. Exactly. You can, yes, you vote, and the, uh, the tree that gets the most votes over the Christmas holidays will be awarded the People's Choice Award yeah. at uh, a future council meeting. Perfect opportunity to see everything all at once. You can come, in, if you don't get to go do it that day, you can come all through the Christmas season and enjoy the trees. They are so creative and yeah. a lot of fun. Last year's winner was actually a story, I believe. Yeah, she it was, was a story that author. she yeah. wrote a book, a little book, and she put the story on the Christmas tree. It was amazing. Yeah. Great time of the year. Out. Yes. Do we have uh, a report that you would like to share? Yes, if um, commissioners were able to review the monthly report, just open okay. it up to questions. Any questions from Isabella's report? Not for me. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. No questions. Okay. And our chairperson not being here tonight, we uh, will put her report off until when she, until she's able to be present. Updates. Committee updates. Planning. Art at the center. All right. So we are super excited to announce um, that. Because the um, town went ahead and put a hold on a freeze on budget um, when COVID hit back in March, um, but economically um, everything's really going pretty well for the town, and they um, have unfrozen certain parts of that budget, including our art at the center, um, which we're so grateful for, and I think it's so important to keep the momentum of that program going. So. Uh, we have a new um, call to artists that's going to be available on our website. And if you're familiar with our call to artists in the past, it's always been about a three-month window um, yearly for artists to submit applications. We're going ahead and we're opening that up to a year-long process. So it's just going to be a rotational call. You can submit any time throughout the year. Um, and we're just hoping that this allows artists more opportunity to create work, take photos of that work, and submit the work to us. And they're not so confined to that time period. Um, so if you're interested or you know anyone who is a, an, a sculptor, because that's p particularly what we're looking for is outdoor um, public art uh, sculpture. Uh, you can go ahead and get in contact with me. Again, my name is Isabella. Um, my phone number directly is 928-759-3127. Or you can send me an email, I-C-H-E-W-N-I-N-G at pvaz.net. Um, the application is also going to be available on the website at our Art at the Center um, tab on pvaz.net. Um, and you'll be able to find all the information about the public art call there. So we're super excited about that. Do you want to mention um, how the change in the program as far as donations and on loan and? Yeah, so we're hoping to simplify the, the program in general by offering artists the option to either, they, they're going to have three options basically. Um, to either request that the town purchases the piece that they're presenting or offer the piece on loan where the piece will be for sale by the artist while we're housing it at the Art at the Center um, or donate the piece to the town to become part of our permanent collection. So it really gives artists a more broad 
um, spectrum of options for them when they're looking at our collection. Um, and that's all in the application as well, detailed. So we're excited. Check it out. <laughs> all right. So we also um, are super excited to go ahead and get going on our underpass mural program again. So um, we were able to complete a wonderful mural with local artists and um, students, um, I want to say three years ago at this point, two years ago, and um, we're ready to do another one. So right now what we're seeking is um, interested artists who have a background in painting, maybe more specifically murals, um, who might be interested in working with us collaboratively on this project. We have two additional underpasses that have already been um, distinguished as mural walls. So we are ready to go. Um, we just would love to work with a local artist on this type of a project. So again, if you are an artist or if you know an artist um, who is a painter or a muralist, please have them reach out um, to me. Again, my phone number is 928-759-3127, or you can find me in the Parks and Recreation um, office in the third floor of the Civic Center. We would love to talk to you guys about ideas that you might have for mural projects. And what's the age range for the artists? artists? That's a great question. If you look at the picture that's on the screen, there's a youngster there, maybe 12 years old, and we mm -hmm. see some adults that are more than 12 years old yeah <laughs> so it's really if you love art if you, you have like an to idea do this kind of painting yes if you have an idea and you know a little bit about painting or a lot about painting let us know we'd love to talk to you also um if you don't think you can take on an entire underpass we might be able to develop a team of artists to work sure. together so if you're interested at all we'd love to hear from you um all ages all backgrounds Thank you. Let's move on to our new business. Isabel, would you like to introduce that, please? Yes, so um, the commission has been working hard on this new project um, that we're, we're really just very excited about. Um, the 2020 Civic Center Bronze Sculpture Project is an opportunity that's available to us because of a bequest from a local family, the Jenkins family. Um, the Jenkins family bequest a sum of money to the town that was to be used for beautification projects, and um, Mr. Raymond A. Jenkins himself was a bronze sculptor um, hobbyist. He was many things in his life, but one of the things that we learned about him was that he was a bronze sculptor. So. Um, the town really wanted to honor him with a number of bronze sculpture projects. Um, we put out an open call in early September um, nationally and specifically advertised it regionally for bronze artists or artist groups. And um, we put together a selection committee of local arts professionals to look over all of the submissions that we received and to narrow it down to our top submissions um, to be viewed by the commission. So our commission at the last work study reviewed in detail all of the submissions and really came to the conclusion that there was a one clear standout um, project and that project was actually put forth by a local artist. The whole submission process was a blind process, so the commissioners actually didn't know until after they had selected this piece that this was um, a local artist. Um, the local artist is Mr. Tom White of Tom White Studios Incorporated, and this photo is just an example of what he submitted. Um, so I would love to have the commission um, go ahead and vote to recommend to council this project. Okay, I'll make the motion. I would like to make a motion that the Arts and Culture Commission recommend to our town council acceptance of Mr. Tom White's sculpture as presented. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Wonderful. Motion carries. So we um, will actually be presenting to council tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m. Um, about this entire project and we would love to have anyone join um, oh, who's yes. interested. Yeah, we'll be there. What about social media? All right, so um, we actually have a brand new social media, um, multiple pages of social media for our arts and culture, specifically in Prescott Valley. So um, before we were housed kind of under parks and recreation, which was awesome, but at this point we feel that arts and culture needs its own space, its own voice, and um, we have so much going on in arts and culture. We need our we need our own page, so we have it now. Um, so you can find us at Prescott Valley Arts on Facebook and Instagram. Um, this is just an example of our Prescott Valley Arts and Culture page. And for the month of October, we're sharing daily posts about National Arts and Humanities Month. Um, we're just gonna share all the updates on the bronze projects we have going on, Art at the Center, um, the Fine Art Showcase, anytime we have bands coming in to perform or events going on, Youth Arts Month, that's where we're gonna share all that information. Um, so please give us a follow on Prescott Valley Arts on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Is there any other business anyone would like to bring before the commission, either one? I would like to, at this moment, take time out for a commercial. <laughs> you see, there's three of us here, and there's actually room on this commission for seven people, two of them being non-voting members. This is a wonderful, fun commission. You don't have to be an artist to be a member. None of us are artists. We just love the, the scope of the arts and want to embrace them and enhance the, the arts uh, experience here in Prescott Valley. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, please contact Isabella at 759-309, uh, or no, 3127 is your 3127. Number, 3127. There's also online an application to become a member of the Arts and Culture Commission, and you can fill it out online. So it would be another opportunity. Um, I invite any one of our guests here who, uh, if they have something they would like to say to the commission or if they have any questions for us, this is your moment to shine. Hearing none, uh, let me announce that our next uh, work study meeting will be Wednesday, November 4th at 5.30 p.m. in our conference room in the Civic Center, room 428. And our regular meeting will be Wednesday, November 18th at 5.30 p.m. right here in the auditorium. And you're all invited to attend. There being no further business to bring before this commission, I declare it adjourned. <laughs>